Well, fallout from the rescue of 4,000 beagles in Virginia that is just intensifying. Despite the abuse and neglect that was carried out by Invigo, the company will reportedly not face charges or face any fines. Yeah, this is frustrating a lot of people. The USDA has even renewed their license, if you can believe it, and will allow them to continue with these kinds of operations. KOSI's Hunter Sowards has more now on what is being done to hold offenders accountable. The nationwide outcry in response to those rescued beagles is pushing the topic of animal testing and breeding into the spotlight. Advocates tell me USDA licensed facilities have operated under lax and abusive standards for years, and it's taken a mass scale story like this to finally get the public's attention. In part two of this special report, we take a closer look at the largest funder of scientific research testing on animals, the National Institute of Health. No matter what brought about this anger, I'm happy that people are riled up about it. Before the closure of a Virginia animal testing facility, few people were aware that operations like this are licensed by the USDA. The breeding of animals for use in research is legal in all 50 states. It is more prevalent in states that have more leniency on the laws and regulations around the breeding of animals. Meredith Blanchard with the National Anti-Vivisection Society pushes for changes to the law surrounding that research. <laughs> Saying the 4,000 dogs found abused and mistreated underscores their efforts. The future that NABS works towards is a future where the NIH has shifted its funding priorities towards the development of these human-based test methods. The group has their sights set on toppling efforts from the National Institute of Health. They provide grants to you know research institutions, huge grants to research institutions, trying to develop a pacemaker, for example. And dogs will be implanted um, with pacemakers, and then scientists will induce a heart attack, either medically or by forcing the animal to run until its heart gives out to see if the pacemaker is effective. Just one example of tests being ran on animals with a just 5% success rate when tested in humans. Most of the testing on animals um, that's being done today just does not lead to positive outcomes for human health. The NIH has admitted that 95% of all drugs that are shown to be safe and effective in animal tests fail once they, come, once they start human trials because either the drugs just didn't work or they were too dangerous, sometimes even lethal. And when, when they're given to humans. Blanchard says the public can be part of life-saving change, encouraging elected officials to call for funding streams to focus on creating human-based test models. Right now, less than 1% of NIH funding goes towards development and validation of human-based methods. So for the benefit of humans and animals alike, we need to be pouring more funds into creating these superior test methods that are based off of human biology. For organizations like NAVS, they're also pushing for more transparency from the NIH. All of this is being done, you know, behind closed doors. Reporting requirements are minimal. It's very hard for us as advocates to answer quite basic questions. Hoping that a change from the top down will save more animals from unnecessary abuse. It's just not an effective way for our scientists to be going about trying to solve the great, you know, the pressing medical issues in today's society. We really need to be developing these human-based test methods instead. Now, for those who want to be part of that change, the National Anti-Vivisection Society, they have a list of ways to help and who to contact about legislation that they say can make a difference. For example, the state of California is considering a bill that would end the use of dogs and cats in pesticides and other chemical testing. It's known as the PET Act, and advocates hope it will take our state a step closer to a more humane future for all animals. Reporting in studio, Hunter Sowards, KUSI News.